Hello, chess friends. This is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessOpeningsExplained.com. And today I want to show you a cool idea in the Grand Prix setup for white based on our white book after the moves e4, c5, knight c3, g6. Here we recommend the move f4 to go for the kingside expansion, bishop g7, knight f3. And the line I wanted to take a look at is the move d6. Granted, you have to be ready for the move knight c6 as well, but this is going to be subject of another video. For now, let me show you a cool idea what to do after the move d6. You probably remember that we recommend in the white book to throw in this cute check bishop b5. Now, what's the point of throwing this check bishop b5? Well, the main idea here is that after natural move bishop d7, we're gonna drop the bishop to c4. At first, this looks a little bit unusual, right? Why would we spend two tempi in the opening moving with the same piece? But black's typical pl plan in these positions is to play e6 and d5. By forcing the bishop on d7, it's going to be much harder for black to execute this plan. So here black has two main moves, knight c6 or e6. Let's take a look what happens after the natural move e6. White castles. And now black can play knight to e7 or knight f6. I think black already has to be extremely careful here. Well, if black plays knight f6, the idea here is just to put pressure on the e4 pawn, then I can show you an excellent idea how to get an advantage. Immediately you can play the move e5. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, the knight on f6 is hit, knight g4. And with this beautiful idea, knight e4, you're hitting the c-pawn, most importantly the d6 square, and white gets a really powerful attack. Taken on e5 is no good. For obvious reasons, we can throw in this intermezzo check, king moves somewhere, then we can take on e5, and then take on f7 with a really deadly fork, winning the game on the spot. So you see how dangerous this position is for black. So e5 is really interesting. Although the more common move order is instead of the move knight f6, if black tries to play knight c6, for instance, castles, knight c6, and then we play, we could still play this idea f5, for instance, but d3 is natural. And here black can again play the move knight f6, which would transpose to the position that I wanted to share with you. So if we go back to the knight f6 move order, like I mentioned, besides the e5 move, you can simply play logical move d3. And if black plays the move knight c6, this position you could get via various transpositions where black plays knight c6 first, knight f6 second, or vice versa. Here is the bombshell of an idea that I wanted to share with you. Typically, you know the main idea is to play queen e1, and then after queen e1, black castles, you play queen h4. Well, it doesn't work here, and I'm going to show you why. But before we go here, I want to show you the bombshell idea, knight b5 x clan. Wow, what a move. And once again, you take care of this d6 weakness by actually noticing the bishop's on d7 is misplaced. This pawn is under attack, and there is no easy way for black to defend the pawn. Well, what black can do here is to try queen b8 or bishop c8. These are the two natural moves. Let's look at queen b8 first. In that case, you immediately strike in the center with e5. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And notice that because of this threat, knight d6 check and hitting the knight, black is completely busted. He can try to win the pawn, but as you probably see, bad news is coming for black's queen. Takes, takes. And now very powerful move, bishop f4, a tempo move. And after any queen move, knight c7 pretty much 
wins the game on the spot. So you see, this is very difficult position for black to play. So bishop c8 going backwards is what I expect for, from a lot of players. And once again, the idea here is e5 x clam hitting right in the center where it hurts. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And once again, dual threat, knight d6 check, pawn takes knight. And I think black's already lost. That's right. 11 moves in the game, black is completely lost. For instance, knight d5, we throw in this check. Doesn't matter where the king goes. King f8, for instance, our next move is the same. Knight g5, and you obviously notice the big problem here. f7 square is way too weak. The game is practically over after knight takes. Knight g or knight d, doesn't matter, takes f7 and this fork wins the game. So you see how powerful this idea is, and it could only happen if this bishop is on d7. Now, I also want to draw your attention to a very cunning trap that black can set for you if you follow the general idea of queen e1. Notice queen e1 here, I don't recommend after the natural move castles queen h4, for instance, knight a5, f5. It looks like white has a dream attack, right? We talked about bishop h6 and knight g5 ideas in the book. You can also try bishop g5 pin. But the problem here, after knight takes, pawn takes, white has to be extremely careful. And why, you may ask? The problem here is that after e takes f, the natural move bishop g5, which looks like a deadly pin, right? All we need to play is knight d5 and win the game, is very bad due to very kind of idea that black has h6 x clam. Remember, black's already up a pawn. By sacking the h pawn, black can force this endgame. Knight takes e4, and now white's in big trouble. My student actually got into trouble this way, and he got a losing position after a queen takes, rook takes, bishop takes, king takes, knight e4, pawn takes e4, count the pawns, and white is basically lost. There is just not enough material here. So again, this is very important and let's go back to some of the key moves. So after this bishop g5 move, which is an actual move, this is simply wrong because of this cute idea, h6, and this is gonna give black an immediate advantage. So you see, you have to be a little bit careful if you just follow with the sort of well-known bl bl blueprint of queen e1, queen h4. That is why, again, I want to show you this cool idea after I move knight c6, the bishop on d7 is misplaced. Knight b5 x clam is not only going to give you an advantage, it may actually win on the spot. The advantage is tremendous and I didn't find any defense and I hope you get to score some nice victories with this idea. Thank you very much. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein. Goodbye.